Question 7 from the 2019 Higher Physics SQ Exam Section 2. Scientists have recently discovered a type of particle called a pentaquark. Pentaquarks are very short-lived and contain five quarks. A lambda b pentaquark contains the following quarks. Two up, one down, one charm and one anti-charm quark. 7a, quarks and leptons are fundamental particles. And for one mark, we are asked to explain what is meant by the term fundamental particle. Well, you just have got to learn it. A fundamental particle is one that is not composed of any other particle. It can't be broken down into any composite particles or constituent parts. It exists on its own and cannot be divided up into any other type of particle. So a fundamental particle is one that is not composed of any other particle. And that will get you your one mark for that. Question 7, part B2. State the name given to the group of matter particles that contains quarks and leptons. This is just purely a learning one. You have to know your chart of the standard model. You have to know that in the big Lego box of particles, there's two main big groups called quarks and leptons, and these are called fermions. We leave the bosons out. These are the force-carrying particles, as you can see there. But the answer to question 7a2 is state the name given to a group of matter particles that contains quarks and leptons. And the answer is fermions. So your answer for that one, to get you the one mark, would be fermions. Just learn the chart. Question 7b. The table contains information about the charge on the quarks that make up the lambda b pentaquark. And we can see we've got the table here. We've got the type of quark, up, down, charm, and anti-charm. And on the right-hand side column, we have got the charge in terms of fractions of the electronic charge E. And we've got to determine the total charge on the lambda b pentaquark. And we're told from the question that the lambda b contains two up, one down, one charm, and one anti-charm. So on the table, you've just got to just fill them in and add them up. So we've got two up quarks, and we have got one down, we have got one charm, and we've got one anti-charm. So what does that give us in terms of charges? Well, two lots of plus two-thirds of an electronic charge E is going to give us plus four-thirds of E. One down is going to give us just simply a minus one third of E. And one charm is going to give us plus two thirds of E. And finally, one anti charm is going to give us minus two thirds of E. So, in terms of electronic charges, we can see that uh, we can cancel some out here. We can say that the plus two three from the charm is going to cancel the charge out of the anti-charm, and you'll be left with nothing there. And we're going to be left with then just simply plus four thirds E minus one third E, and that's going to give us the following. So we've got four thirds plus four thirds E, and minus one third E. And that's going to give us three over three E, which is going to give us quite simply equal to plus E. So the total charge on the lambda B pentaquark is plus E. Question 7, Part C, I. One theory to explain the structure of the lambda b pentaquark suggests that three of the quarks group together and one quark and an antiquark group together within the pentaquark itself. You can see a diagram of it here. Now we're asked just for one mark to state the type of particle that is made of a quark anti-quark pair. Now once again you have to study your standard model diagram and there it is here is the leptons and the quarks make up the fermions but here's the part down here we have to really think about and that is the mesons made up of a quark and an anti-quark. So you have to know the difference between a baryon and a meson. This question is asking you what type of particle is made up of a quark anti-quark pair and it's got to be a meson. So your answer for that questionnaire is going to be a meson. M-E-S-O-E-N. From the chart, just learn the chart. Question 7, C, part 2. The mean lifetime of another quark antiquark pair is 8.0 times 10 to minus 21 seconds in its own frame of reference. 
During an experiment, the quark antiquark pair is travelling with a velocity of 0.91c relative to the stationary observer. Calculate the mean lifetime of this quark antiquark pair relative to the stationary observer. Now, to set this problem up, we know that the equation we're going to use is the time dilation equation. T prime is the observed time is equal to t, and it's going to be divided by the square root of 1 minus v over c, all squared, where v is the speed which the frame of reference is moving past us. Now, when you look closely at this, end, sometimes it can be very confusing which t to use and which not, and I always stick with drawing out a picture of what's happening. I'm going to put that little quark anti quark pair in its own spaceship. There it is, like that. I'm going to put it in its own spaceship. And its spaceship stands for its reference frame. So there is the quark anti quark pair there, if you can imagine that. And the time it lives in that reference frame is going to be 0, 0.8.0 times 10 to minus 21 seconds. Because as far as it's concerned, the quark, anti-quark pair is not moving. But if we draw a picture of an observer, and I always like to draw a picture showing you an imaginary observer measuring something here, then this will be the time t dashed, and this will be the time t. And the spacecraft moving with a speed of 0.91c will be the speed that the quark antiquark passes by the observer. So now we know which t prime is and which t is and what the speed is, we can plug the numbers into the time dilation equation. So t prime then is going to equal to the t in the reference frame, 8.0 times 10 to minus 21 seconds, divided by the square root of 1 minus, and v is going to be, this is the good part about using the speed in terms of a fraction of c, it's going to be 0 0.91c divided by c, all squared, and remember it's the square root of all that number. So t prime then comes out to be 8.0 times 10 to minus 21, divided by the square root of 1 minus, and the two c's cancel, and you're left with 0 0.91 squared. 0 0.91 squared. Now all you have to do is just simply do that in your calculator, make sure you don't make any mistakes, and you're left with a value of 1.9 times 10 to the minus 20 seconds. So you can see that the observer actually observes and measures that the lifetime of the quark anti quark pair is longer than it was in the quark anti quarks reference frame. So always draw a diagram, that's the key thing here. Draw a diagram and you'll never get these questions wrong. And remember the arithmetic with the square root signs. Question seven continued part D I. The Lambda B pentaquark has a mass energy equivalence of 4450 mega electron volts, that's MeV. 1 EV, 1 electron volt, is equal to 1.60 times 10 to minus 19 joules. And for one mark, we asked to determine the energy in joules of the Lambda B pentaquark. The electron volt is the unit which particle physicists use a lot to stand for the energy of a particle, which also, in fact, turns out to be its mass as well. Uh, because we know mass and energy are interchanged, as we'll see the next part of the question. So this is a kind of straightforward one. One electron volt, one EV, is the energy gained by an electron when it is accelerated through a potential difference of one volt, and it is a common unit of energy in particle physics. So we know that in the mass-energy equivalence of the pentaquark, we have 4,450 and it's mega electron volts, which so times 10 to the power 6 electron volts. And we're going to multiply that, but 1 electron volt stands for, and we know that 1 electron volt stands for 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, and that's per electron volt. You can see the two electron volts cancel out, and we're left with a simple calculation that's going to give us 7.12 times 10 to the power minus 10 
and that's going to be joules on your calculator. So that's a simple one. If you know the mega electron volts value, just multiply it by 1.60 times 10 to minus 19 joules, and you'll get the energy equivalent of it. Question 7, part D, part 2. We're coming to the end of this very long question on the pentaquark. And to get our three marks, we must calculate the mass of the lambda B pentaquark. We know its energy, and therefore we can equate that with the famous Einstein equation E equals mc squared. So to find the mass of it, we go E divided by c squared, and that's going to give us a value for the mass. We know the energy, so if I plug in the numbers, 7.12 times 10 to the minus 10 of a joule. And I'm going to divide that by c squared, which is 3 times 10 to the power 8, all squared. So we do that in the calculators. We end up with a, a mass of 7.91 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. We're using the mass-energy relationship here. And that will gain you your three marks. Mm -hmm.